In today's episode, we'll be comparing the Shape Builder tool and the Pathfinder panel in Adobe Illustrator. They both let you add and subtract segments of overlapping shapes, and they're predominantly used to create complex shapes from simple ones. The Pathfinder panel was added to Illustrator in 2001, and the Shape Builder tool was added in 2010, so it's quite a lot newer. Uh, given Shape Builder is newer, many people just assume it's better. They're both useful, but in different ways. Let's take a look at some common uses for Shape Builder and Pathfinder to see how they compare. The most striking difference between the two is the way that they're used. Shape Builder is a, a tool that interacts directly with objects on the canvas. So to unite two circles, you'd select them and then switch to the Shape Builder tool and drag across all the shape segments to stitch them together. Holding Shift lets you drag a marquee selection to choose which segments to unite. This can be a lot faster in some scenarios. And a single click on a shape segment separates it from the other shapes. To remove shape segments, hold Option or Shift Option while dragging or clicking. And that's pretty much it for the Shape Builder tool. The stacking order of objects doesn't matter. Um, there are some scenarios where Shape Builder can be a little bit more of a hassle but it's pretty easy to use once you understand how it works. The Pathfinder panel contains a set of 10 actions that operate on the current selection. So to unite two circles, you'd select them, then click on the Unite button in the Pathfinder panel. The stacking order of objects does matter for some of the actions, like minus front and minus back. Um, Pathfinder also groups the result of the action, which is typically not what I want, so I have to ungroup immediately after doing any Pathfinder action. Pathfinder can work destructively, where the resulting paths are placed on the canvas, or non-destructively, where the original path is, is kept and you can continue to edit it later. Uh, option clicking on the actions in the Pathfinder panel changes them to be non-destructive rather than destructive. The Shape Builder tool is always destructive. Shape Builder and Pathfinder both have quite a few options to control their behaviour. To open up the Shape Builder options, double click the Shape Builder icon in the tool panel or press enter with the Shape Builder tool selected. To open up the Pathfinder options, choose the Pathfinder options menu command from the overflow menu in the Pathfinder panel. Okay, so of the two, which has the better interaction model? I prefer personally working directly with objects on the canvas and it's a bit of a hassle to move your cursor across to the Pathfinder panel and back again. That could be resolved if there were keyboard shortcuts for the Pathfinder panel, but there aren't. You can set up actions in Illustrator, but then you're limited to function keys. You could use third-party software. You could resolve it a whole bunch of different ways. But really, I think the Shape Builder wins when it comes to interaction. Uniting a few simple shapes works well with Shape Builder and Pathfinder. Doesn't really matter which one you use but there are certainly scenarios where Shape Builder is far worse. Um, as you can see here, I've got really quite a simple shape, but uniting all the parts requires careful mousing with the freeform method or lots of marquees using the marquee method. And this really isn't even a complex example. In contrast, Pathfinder can unite any number of shapes with a single click. So Pathfinder wins this round. It's common to use several shapes to construct a single piece that you would like to keep, and this is the technique I used for my Camera Iris speedrun. To separate a single piece with the Shape Builder tool, all you need to do is click on the piece that you would like to keep. That's it. Pathfinder doesn't have an action to keep a specific piece because of the way it works. It works on the entire selection. So what you end up having to do is use the divide action and then deselect the piece you want to keep and delete everything else. That means Shape Builder wins this round. If you'd like to keep every piece, the only way to do that with Shape Builder is to click every single segment. I'm not aware of any way around this. As mentioned previously, Pathfinder's Divide does exactly what we're after in this scenario, so Pathfinder wins this round. With Shape Builder, it's possible to option click a path segment to remove it. The path segment will be cut at the nearest path intersections. This is an incredibly cool feature, and other methods for doing the same thing in Illustrator often require tons of steps. Pathfinder cannot do this. 
Although with Pathfinder, the outline action creates outlines of every shape segment. This means every path segment is cut at the nearest intersections. This is the technique used in my fingerprint icon speedrun. And the fingerprint icon is a really good example of something that would be challenging with the shape builder tool. And it'd require 11 or so really precise option clicks on the path segments to remove them. And this is just way slower than Pathfinder's outline action. Given they can both divide at intersections, but they have their strengths and weaknesses, I'm gonna call this round a tie. Hey, did you know you can use Shape Builder and Pathfinder to clean up anchor points? They both typically only remove redundant points on straight lines and work best for 90 degree lines. They can both also be used to remove coincidental points, so that's anchor points that are on top of each other. They both do a really similar job, but the results can be different and Pathfinder is often slightly better. As you can see with this hexagon example, there's just fewer anchor points, it's done a better job cleaning it up. There are also some scenarios where Shape Builder adds unnecessary anchor points, like when combining these shapes to create this final puzzle piece. The Shape Builder result has 36 anchor points, while the Pathfinder result only has 32. Pathfinder wins this round. When working with open paths, Pathfinder just considers them to be closed, allowing all of the actions to be performed anyway except for three of the actions, divide, trim, and merge, just show an error. This means Pathfinder does something and it likely does what you expect anyway. In contrast, Shape Builder doesn't let you act on shape segments for open paths. This just feels like a pretty unnecessary limitation. Pathfinder wins this round. For this test, I united a circle and a rectangle, then exported the result as an SVG, then checked all the coordinates inside the SVG. Bezier path intersections are notoriously tricky to do accurately, and it's common to see rounding errors and other kinds of issues. Pathfinder seems to have done a better job, and it's closer to the ideal result. The Shape Builder also encourages multiple actions, so you may unite some pieces and then unite a few more and then unite a few more, and this likely leads to cumulative rounding errors and paths with more anchor points. So I think Pathfinder wins this round again. For those keeping a tally, uh, I think the winner at this point is gonna be really obvious. While there are some situations where Shape Builder is preferable, Pathfinder just overall is, is superior. Having said that, there are definitely some situations where using Shape Builder is better and is quicker. So what I'm gonna try and do is make sure I use both and use them in the correct scenario where they will be quicker.